Okay, right. Um, this video is just going to try and explain to you guys. Um, it's actually maths, which I detest, really hate. Um, but I'm afraid you know to know. You need to know um, this bit of maths to help you with some of the questions in your electronics. So this is all about a thing called standard form, which is basically something that um, nerdy blokes, men with beards, um, and mathematicians, those fascinating people used to express really big or really small numbers. It's kind of like shorthand, a shortcut way of saying difficult numbers. So I've put together this table for you. Um, I'll just explain what's going on here. Um, on the top, above the zero, imagine zero is numbers that you know. Above them, these are numbers getting bigger and bigger. Okay, You may recognize some of those words. Kilo is in kilometer, uh, mega, um, giga as in gigabyte, um, tera as in terabyte. Okay, you may have heard these words but never known why they had these little prefixes or words in front of them. Um, we've also got some that go smaller, which is all of these below the zero line. Uh, milli as in millimeter, uh, micro as in microphone, micrometer, uh, nano as in nanotechnology. Okay. Um, obviously you know these things tend to mean small items so just that's the first thing to remember remember the words and do they conjure up images of big things like when I think of tera I think of terabyte hard disks and them being lots of storage or gigahertz processors being really fast and big um, mega I know it sounds odd but I think of megasaurus I don't know why big dinosaur um, Kilo, kilometer, that's a big distance. If I think of millimeter, I think of a small distance. If I think of nano, I think of nanotechnology and little robots and things. And that makes me think of small things. So try and associate the word with, every, with remembering big or little. Um, I'll take a breath. <laughs> um, each word has a symbol. So tera is T, giga is G, mega is M, and so on. Um, just watch out because mega and milli one means massive, one means small, both use M but milli is lowercase and mega is uppercase. Um, it's easy to get those two mixed up and you'd get totally the wrong answer. Um, they've got this times 10 to the power of um, which I'll explain in a little bit more how you can use your scientific calculator to work this out for you. Um, but what I've written here is the most important and interesting thing, as interesting as you can make this rubbish. Um, this is what that number would act, what the number one would look like if it had this written after it. So if you saw one k, it actually would, means a thousand. If you saw one m, it actually means a million. One g means a thousand million, as in one gig. One tera means a thousand million million. Okay, so big numbers. Now it's the same the other way. If I was to write nano, that's actually, if I was to write one nano, that would actually be 0 0.0000000001, 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 000 which is a really, really tiny number. And as you can imagine, if you were doing lots of equations and maths in science, as you do, and in electronics, um, it's going to get pretty annoying if you're going to have to write down big or small numbers and loads of zeros all the time, plus you're going to miss zeros by human error. So this is why they came up with this thing called standard form. I hope that makes you realise that it has got some importance and it's not just put on earth to, to give you a headache. Um, anyway, just to give you a few examples, um, on, this N, on this page here, um, I've just put down a bare note of this, kilo, mega, milli, micro are pretty much the only ones you're going to come up with in the electronics paper. Kilo and mega usually used for resistors, you'd never find capacitors measured in those. Um, you might find volts measured in kilo but not in GCSE electronics that would be like power line voltage um, and you might find milli and micro used to measure current or milli usually for measuring current or micro is used for measuring capacitors so that might help you work out if they're big or small if you try and associate them with the components they normally would be used with don't bother revising the rest because you don't need them in your head. Anyway, a few examples. On the left are the standard form numbers, on the right is what they would translate to and what you would need to kind of put into your calculator, either converted or as you go, which I'll show you in a minute. So, 10 kilovolts. 
um, 1.8 mega ohms, 100 milliamps, 330 microfarads. Remember the funny U shape stands for micro, um, and 100 mega watts. Okay. So 10 kilovolts is actually 10,000 volts. 1.8 m ohms is 1,800,000 ohms. 100 milliamps is 0.1 of an amp. Um, 330 microfarads is 0 0.0033 farads and 100 megawatts is 100 million watts. So you can see they translate to very different things. Now, thankfully, if we go back to our grid here, um, I'm just going to have to put this into a different view for you so you can see two things at once. Okay. Um, if you load up the Windows calculator, I'm not sure if older versions of Windows do this, but Windows 7 does you may not know there's actually a scientific mode and if you go view and select scientific you'll see you get a whole load of new functions now say someone had written to you um, let's just bring up these examples here and I'll just prove them to you and someone one of the questions had 10 kilovolts written down and you needed to convert it well on your calculator the one you'll have on your desk in front of you in the exam because you are allowed one um, you would type in 10 now you'd go look up on the grid what K stands for um, but except you couldn't look it up on the grid I'm afraid because they don't give you the grid in the exam um, but you can see K stands for times 10 to the 3 and you've got a button on your calculator called EXP and all you do is you type 10 as in 10 kilovolts EXP and then you have to put in this little number up here that's associated with each word so 3 Okay, and you can see, if we press equals, it turns it into 10,000, which is what 10 kilovolts should be. If I had um, 20 microfarads, well, that multiplier is minus 6. So I type in 20, and then do EXP, and then I do a minus 6. So I press the minus and the 6. Uh, I did that totally wrong, because I don't know how to use this calculator. Sorry, I should have used that minus. Ignore what I just did. So 20... EXP minus, that's better, 6. As you can see, that's done totally the wrong thing. That's brilliant. Ignore what I just said. Okay, sorry, I've just been playing around with um, the scientific calculator in Windows. Um, it works, every calculator works a slightly different way. That's what mathematicians do, just to annoy you. This is why I never got on with it. Um, every calculator I've owned is different. Anyway, I figured out the Windows calculator, you have to do it in a different way. So, if I had a number, I first have to work out the times 10 bit first. So, if it said milli after it, that would be times 10 to the minus 3. So I would do, and you even have to program it in a retarded way. So if I press minus 3, I get minus, then 10 to the X button, that gives me 0 0.0001, okay, which is what I've written here. And then you times that by whatever number you had written before it. So if I had 20 UF, I would time, sorry, 20 MF millifarads, I would times it by 20. And that would be your answer. What a con convoluted way of doing it. Um, so basically, read your calculator's instructions and figure out how your calculator converts them. Or if you're like me and you hate calculators and you hate maths, just try and remember times a thousand times a million divide by a thousand divide by a million okay and you'll get the you'll get the same answers sorry if that confused you